Hey, hello, Jenny. Hello, Short Mixberg and Gabriella and Harry Lines. Oh, what a cool, cool name. Paolo Maestro Mappel Franco Arts. Hello. Hey, everybody. This is Rob uh, for Urban Sketches today. Thank you so much for joining this live stream. Everybody wave. Hello. Thank you for the hearts. Good morning. Hi, Annette. Hello. Hey, Lefty Mon. Hi. That's right. Thank you, Short Mix Bag. Thank you for telling us where you're from. Please type in there so that I know where you guys are tuning in from. Hello, Jane. One of our guests has just joined us live. Nikhil, hello. Mundo, Gabriella, hi. Virginia, hello. And Rita's here too. Welcome everybody to this live session on Urban Sketchers. This is a very special session that we're holding for you because one of the big questions that we always get uh, among the instructors and the faculty who've been teaching at symposiums over the years is how do you put a proposal together? How do you, what, what do you look for in a symposium proposal? Because some of you may or may not be aware that all the proposals are sent to Urban Sketchers, but a few of us in the education committee get together and we actually look through every proposal. We read every propo proposal and we then go through, we've got a particular selection process to pick the proposals that we shortlist. And then after that, that goes to another team to pick the final list. Now, how to put that proposal together, what is involved, we're going to go, we're going to go into detail. But one of the things that I would say before we start inviting guests on is to bear in mind that if you are interested in submitting a symposium proposal, and I assume that you are since you're here for the show. Welcome again. Hello, everyone who's just joined. Hello, we're Urban Sketches going live, talking about what it takes to put together a good symposium proposal. So what's really important to know is if you would like to teach at the symposium, you should also be having some kind of teaching experience. And the best way to start is in your local chapter so that you have an idea how to organize the time, get it, get a little experience with some friends and all that. And then after that, you'll have a better idea what goes into it. But if you're starting from scratch and you're just curious, hello, everybody. That's why we have this show on. That's why we've got all these guests. And to kick things off, I'm going to invite Rita Sabla coming Sketchers Education Committee for some time now. She is stepping down this year. Our new education director, Annette, is in Europe and she's also on the team. Hey, hi. And now uh, we've got Rita. Hello, Rita. How are you? Hi, Rob. So good to see you. It's, it's great to be um, talking about this subject. That means that the symposium is coming up soon and the the open call for proposals is open, so we're looking for great ideas for a workshop for Buenos Aires 24. We're also looking for ideas for lectures, for activities, and of course, demos. So your time is now, Sketchers, until yes, December 10th. Plenty to think about, which is why we wanted to have this show, so that if there is a little bit of time, give you an idea what's what what we're looking for so that if you've already submitted a proposal, you still have time to tweak it. Uh, if you think like, oh, I didn't think of that, that might be a good idea. So kicking things <laughs> off, Rita, let's just start. I've, I've just got a quick question. Like how many symposiums have you taught at now? I've actually only taught at one symposium, but I've been teaching um, as, as an education director, I don't teach at a symposium. I am there to kind of help help so you're out. So. Shepherding the rest of us and organizing things. I know that Rita was so busy in Auckland. Mm. I mean, she was organizing the instructors retreat and like making sure all the workshops are going well and popping in to say hi to everybody. So um it's you're stepping down as education director. We wanted to thank you live for the okay. time and your and all the effort <laughs> because USK Talks also was a huge effort and Rita was like the person behind it, pushing it on, doing the research and making things work. So 
Thank you, Rita. On behalf of all your fans. Thank you, Rob. Um, it's been great to work with you. Yeah. Okay. It's been, it's a, good been a good four years. Well, let's just let's jump right let's in. Let's so jump the first right in. Question right? that I have, Rita, for you is: How do you choose a topic for a workshop? That's a great question to start with. So, what kind of topic should you choose? That's the first question on the proposal form, and that's the first question that we should think about. And a good way to um, address it is to think about what are you sort of an expert in? What area of urban sketching is your is your niche area? Um, another way to also think about it is have you taught on the subject before and have you received good feedback from, from your students? So keep in mind that you only have three hours to give this workshop. So it shouldn't be something super broad as... I'm going to teach how to draw architecture. Maybe that's a little too broad. <laughs> and it's, it shouldn't be something too narrow, too. So a good balance of, of broad enough and not too narrow. And it's something that would help other sketchers to become a better sketchers in their own style and in their own right, not just to, to draw exactly like you do. And to arrive at your topic, um, it helps to kind of finish the sentence in your head where you say, at the end of my workshop, I want my students to be able to. Yeah. And what Which leads us to my question about learning goals. Like, how do you think about learning goals when you structure a workshop? And how many learning goals should there be, for instance? Yeah, so another important piece of your proposal is, is something that we look at very carefully as, as the education uh, committee is your learning goals. And these are typically around three, three to four. And they're sort of the subdivisions of, of your broader topic. So if, for example, let's say you want to teach a workshop on how to convey a sense of depth in your sketch. So maybe the steps or the subtopics within that could be the learning goals. It could be how to mix good dark colors in watercolor, it could be how to think about different values and, and do a value map. That could be another learning goal within that topic. And then um, maybe a third one would be how to draw realistic shadows, say. So once you break that down, it becomes clear what you're working on concretely during those yes, that, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, that's something that also that we see a lot. I mean, in the process of uh, looking through uh, proposals, we do see a lot of people who try to put too much in. I think um, Virginia Hine is one of the guests who hopefully can join us live. Uh, she once told me, like, it's she heard from Mark Tara Holmes that um, it's a great idea to keep it really simple and think of three main things that you'd like to your students to learn during a workshop so that you're keeping it really simple because three hours goes by like that. So how do you keep it manageable? Exactly. I think that's that's a really important point. So thank you, Rita, for all those things. And while we're here, welcome everybody who's joining the show. Welcome. It's good to see you waving along. Hi. Um, if you have questions, mm -hmm. those of you in the audience, there is a little speech bubble right at the bottom of the screen next to the little paper aeroplane. So if you have questions, for any of us, please put it in the question box. And over time, you know, I'll, we'll check. And last question for you for now, Rita. Mm -hmm. How should you organize time? How would you suggest people organize those three hours in a symposium workshop? And that's a really, really important thing to think about. Because we've all been to workshops where an instructor turns their back, back to the students and just draws for hours on end <laughs> and after you know a couple of hours you're wondering hmm um are we going to do anything else <laughs> is this a demo or a workshop so it's important to have that distinction in your head because we do have demos as part of our programming in the symposium but we're what we're looking for in this particular segment is not a demo it's a workshop so you should think about a good balance of activities that help your students to help them arrive at 
what you're trying to show them. So a short demo is great. I think it's super helpful. And everybody loves to see their favorite instructor, their favorite artist, sort of create that magic in front of them. But it should be short because there's also other important things that you need to include in those three hours. And that is explanation, sort of the presentation. Um, you need to think about maybe some shorter exercises that help your students get to that larger goal of what you're trying to teach them. And you should always leave time for feedback, both individual feed feedback and group feedback. So, and of course, ample time for them to practice. And once again, those three hours go quickly. So it helps to kind of break the, 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 the times and the minutes down and understand for the next 30 minutes, we'll be doing the exercise, then we'll have 15 minutes for group feedback, then the next. So breaking it down really helps to organize things in your head and stick to very realistic goals. Because if you're trying to do a long exercise in a matter of five minutes, everybody is going to be frustrated. So break yeah. it down and then test it with your uh, trusted students at uh, your local place or maybe your friends or somebody who's willing to give you honest feedback on what you're teaching them. Yeah, that's that's really, really key. I think a lot of uh, new instructors, especially on the symposium level, are not aware that there's so many little things that you should bear in mind. For instance, we're teaching on location and you have to also factor how much time it gets it takes mm -hmm. to get from the symposium meeting point to your location. And your location will vary because it depends on what city you're in. You need to do your research. You know, Google Street View drives to see like, oh, what's it look like? Is it appropriate? Ask for local advice. The other bit of advice that I have when you structure your time is don't do a lot introduction about yourself and your work i made the mistake of doing that in the first symposium proposal uh, symposium that i taught and i realized when people were looking around it's like i'm talking too much about my work mm -hmm. if people sign up for your workshop they already know who you mm -hmm. are they have an idea what your work is like so keep it really really short say hi point them to your socials and get right to it absolutely dive into the topic that's so important because those three hours are precious. And really, teaching at a symposium is a privilege. Teaching at, at all, I would say, is Absolutely. a privilege. So how do you give your students and the workshop participants the best three hours they have ever had? That's key. <laughs> That's key. <laughs> We're not okay. asking for a lot, right? We're... <laughs> no. no, you know, that's all. <laughs> Easy peasy. Yes. Okay, welcome. I can see people still coming in. Hello. Oh, yes. Send up a flurry of hearts for Rita, who answered all those questions. And now, Rita, shall we bring in, let's yeah. see, Virginia. Let's see, Virginia. Or let, let's bring in Jane Blundell. Jane, Jane's coming to us from Sydney. <laughs> Jane, yes, let's try to get you on. Jane, you've got to press that little camera icon so that I can pull you in. All right, there's someone who's requesting to join. Uh, Jane, Jane, are you on? Otherwise, if Jane, I can't, if I don't see you on, Jane, can can you hit, press that, that little, next to the comment section, uh, there is a little, like a little camera with a plus, Jane, if you're with us from Sydney. Otherwise, if not, uh, Virginia, if you're also online, would you hit that little uh, icon and then that'll let me, Pull you online so that you can join us. And for those of you who would like to get on, I know you're very excited. Thank you. Uh, but we've got to save space for our guests. So right now I've got Jane coming in. We have Jane coming in from Sydney, Australia, who is also, who's taught at many, many um, symposium. And hi. Hello, Jane. How are you? Hi, Jane. Hello, Rita. Hello, Rob. Hello, everyone joining. Hello. Hi, hi, everybody, the people who are still joining us. Hello, this is the Urban Sketches live stream about how to put together an awesome symposium proposal. We've gone through a whole bunch of questions that Rita, our outgoing education director, has answered brilliantly. And now we come to Jane Blundell from Sydney. Jane, how many symposiums have you taught at? Thank you. Uh, six, I think. Oh, 
06. Wow. Where, where was the first uh, location that you taught at? Singapore. So Singa Oh, yes. Me, me too. Yeah. Which yes. means that you have taught at every symposium since Singapore. Because I just I did that, that math. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> That was quick math. Wow. Yes. Well, I, I <laughs> counted with my fingers earlier, but yes. Uh, so, Jane, you've got plenty of experience working with different kinds of situations, different cities and all that. My question for you then to kick things off is what kind of images and sketches should you include in your proposal? Okay, so the sketches need to be relevant relevant to what you're teaching. So the idea is not just to show off what you're capable of, but to really show that you are, that you're practicing what you preach. So that if, if you're doing, well, for example, my workshop in Auckland was on trees. So I submitted a bunch of different trees that I'd done on location in different areas around the world, demonstrating the different sorts of things that I was planning to teach and just showing that I, that, you know, I had done it myself. Um, I think if you're doing one on, um, there, was, there was amazing workshops in the past of things like looking down on buildings. And so you want to have done that sort of study of looking down on buildings. So it's, it's showing relevant, a few relevant, well-chosen um, examples. You might do one that's more of a kind of a fine art or finished piece, but both, the bulk of them should be on location and they should be basically demonstrating the sort of things you're planning to teach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really key. And in the course of um, going through pro proposals, I think many of us have seen people include lots of examples, but so few are relevant. And also mm -hmm. the other thing that we would like to see is a breakdown, like sketches that you include, help us to understand the process that you intend to teach. Like uh, for the first exercise, for instance, this is perhaps an idea of what your demo is going to be and what you would expect the participants to kind of produce. That, that gives us an idea of your workflow and your mindset, wouldn't you say? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes it clear what process you're looking at. So if you're going to include a tonal study in your, in your um, um, proposal and in your workshop, then showing a tonal study is really helpful. It just shows, I mean, as we know, as we know a picture is worth a thousand words. So it demonstrates what you're talking about. Okay. Thank you, Jane. That makes a lot of sense. The next thing that we would like to touch on then also is through the course of a workshop, um, there will be students who are, who are of all levels. So one of the things that's really key also is your workshop. You should be able to adapt to, you're going to get some beginners, some who are more skilled in different things. So adapting to that and some of the participants will also want feedback. How do you handle things like um, giving feedback to students? How do you give, handle constructive feedback, for instance, in a situation like that? One of the things that I do in any workshop, not just a, an urban sketches, is I always um, have everyone introduce themselves and give a, a little introduction in wh where they're from in their, in their sketching journey and what they're hoping to get out of it and a little of their experience. So right from the start, you know whether you've got total beginners and, and sometimes in a workshop, you'll have complete beginners and those who've been sketching for 40, 45, 50 years. And so it is a challenge. Uh, and this is where uh, having teaching experience is very helpful. And then it, as you move around looking at what people are doing, um, you, you try and keep in mind, okay, so this person, it's her first symposium and she hasn't had much experience. So then what she's expecting of herself has to be um, less than what others might be expecting. And this is often the thing you've got to juggle, that people, they, they look down at their own, what they're doing, instead of recognising that what they're doing is still what they're doing. And, they, and everyone has to start from, from where they're beginning. So for a more ex experienced person, you might push them a little harder or perhaps suggest a slightly different approach or a, a perhaps a different tool even that they could then extend themselves. Whereas for the new person, you might talk a little bit more about how to hold a pencil in a different way or whatever. So you do have to adapt. You have 15 people in a workshop and you have to adapt with each person. At the end of the workshop, you want a chance to give feedback. Um, and it's not enough to just say, oh, that's great, no, move on. You're always looking for, okay, this looks really good here, but what about if that were a bit darker? Or if you had more time, where might you take it further? Or next time you're looking, you know, what else could you consider? There are, there are questions that can help them to then think about what they've got out of the workshop as well. 
I think that's really, really relevant. And this again goes to experience because it takes time. You have to teach a bunch of workshops in order to build the empathy and the ability to understand what each participant needs, which is one reason why workshops are limited to a max of 15, so that you have time to spend with each single participant. And it takes time and experience to understand how you can help each person along their personal sketching journey. Mm -hmm. So again, if you'd like to teach at a symposium, get some practice in. And again, there's still people who are joining us. Hello, thank you for waving. Thank you for saying hi. We can't always say hi to everyone, but now we're taking a break to say hi. And it's also a reminder Oh, yes. Hearts for Jane. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Hearts for Jane. For those of you who have questions, um, if we have not addressed one of the questions you had or you have questions that would that would that are building on what we've been talking about, there is a little question mark box right at the bottom next to comments. Um, if you're not going to be a guest, don't hit the little um, video icon with a plus because that that's requesting us to bring you on live. Unfortunately, we can't bring so many people on live. You're joining us as part of the audience. But what we'd like you to do is put your submit your questions. There's a little question mark box. Put that in there and we will be able to see when there is a question so that we will address that live in a bit. Okay, so... Um, Continuing with this, saying again, hi to everybody. Uh, one more question, Jane, then. Um, in this, the Urban Sketcher Symposium moves around um, constantly. We're trying to go to different continents around the world. What would you say is a really important thing when thinking about a workshop location? What do we, people have to keep in mind? So different locations are going to have different weather conditions. Um, and they're going to have a different, you're going to be looking at a completely different idea. So if you picture a workshop in, for example, New York City, there hasn't been one, but let's just say, um, there you're going to have a lot of buildings, close spaces, lots of shadows. If we're in the main street, if we're in Central Park, then there's all the grasses and so on. And then if you're in a, in a different location, now there was, there was going to be one in Hong Kong, there are going to be lots of tall buildings there as well. When we had the symposium at, um, in, in Manchester, there was likely to be rain, so and there was. So you have to you have to really weigh up all of those possible problems and think how you're going to deal with them. So it may be that you're looking for a sheltered area to teach a workshop, and that's going to affect what you can teach. Or you may be looking at um, even perhaps an inside area in sometimes. So you have to have to think also what could I teach about this location that could be um, interesting or specific to that location. Uh, in Porto, there were these beautiful tiles, and there was one proposal that really went into a bit of the history of the tiles and working in the blue and white. So you can be quite specific to a location if it's something that you know about. Uh, those are really, really good points. And uh, to add to that, I would say whenever the location for a symposium comes out, there is also a document that would that accompanies the request for proposals mm -hmm. and it lists in great detail where the work where suggested workshop locations are mm -hmm. so anyone who wants to put a, a proposal together be prepared to spend some time looking through those in great detail then you think about your area of expertise which location would best complement a workshop for your area of expertise and then you research that place in great detail, you should also have a plan B because if you are working largely outdoors under the sun, for instance, you want to talk about quality of light and what it's like and how to capture that, what happens if it rains? You need to think of a plan B. What would you do if the light changes? So do you need to look for an indoor space? Do you have, you know... How are you going to handle that? Do you need to ask a local sketcher for advice? Can you think of an alternative before you get to the city where the symposium is being held? There's, there's lots of things to think about, mm -hmm. <laughs> which again brings us to the point, you need to have experience teaching. Lots of different kinds of experience under different circumstances, and that will help you prepare to teach at a symposium. Okay, thank you very much.
Dr. Jane Rita, you are still with us. And now we have got our first question in our box. Oh, the second question. The first was from Maysher. Maysher, I hope you got, I said your name right. Does the size of paper relevant? Is a small size okay? Is the size of paper relevant? Maysher, I'm not sure whether you're asking whether it's relevant to a proposal <laughs> or where relevant to taking a workshop, um, but okay, since I'm the digital guy, I'm going to leave it. Rita, tell us, <laughs> does, is paper size relevant? <laughs> um, once again, it's not very clear. Maybe we can ask um, the, the, this, the, this particular person to clarify. Okay. All right. <laughs> is I it for supplies? <laughs> Mayuresh, Mayuresh. Uh, perhaps you'd like to clarify a question. What do you mean by paper size? Do you mean for teaching a workshop or for attending a workshop? And as we wait for you to get back to us about that, Viz Diaz has a question. I'm putting it up on the screen now. Hello, is plein air the same as urban sketch? Interesting question. question. Okay. <laughs> Jane, I'll leave that one to you then. All right. So plein air is being out in the air. So plain air sketching is, is a tradition that went back into the 18, 1800s. And so the landscape was often sketched on location. And there's quite a history to all that because basically paints were available that could be taken outside because they started putting paints in tubes and they started making watercolours in blocks. And so people could actually go outside as opposed to being in their studios and sketch and paint and draw. Urban sketching has a human element, an urban theme. And there is a manifesto, and you must understand the manifesto if you're going to teach with urban sketches. So we sketch, we sketch on location. We, it tends to be um, telling the story of a place. So it isn't acceptable to do a drawing of your dog, even if your dog is outside, unless the dog is then in a location. So you're telling the story of your dog in that location. You can do a portrait in a location, but a portrait on its own is not going to be um, within the manifesto of urban sketches unless it's telling the story. So urban sketching is a part of plain air tradition, but it is, it's a small part. It is a restricted part of it. The other part of the manifesto is that we are true to location. So you're not just inventing something, you're telling the story of a real place. And so we don't tend to have landscapes unless there are buildings in them. We don't tend to have seascapes. Those are part of the plain air tradition, but not in the urban sketching. Thank you, would, Jane. Yeah, I would just add to that because that's the question that I've um, we've thought about a lot with the board also recently. Um, and I, th I think the intention matters uh, with plein air, it's always been the case that the aesthetic uh, representation of the place is the is the intention, is the goal. Whereas with urban sketchers, um, the intention is always reporting of what you're seeing, being a witness of, of what you're seeing, and maybe less so the aesthetic outcome of something pretty to hang on the wall, uh, but more being truthful and seeking to represent the place and capture the essence of what, where you are. Thank you, Rita. Yep. And in short, it's all about the story. <laughs> it's true. It's the story that you're telling. I mean, really, urban sketching, it's us going out into the world, capturing uh, the stories we see visually, telling it in whatever form we choose. It can be extremely finished. It can be a quick drawing. Uh, but what Rita said, and Jane also said, is very true. In plein air, it, it's, it's, a, it's a more finished piece whereas we go about it in all kinds of ways that's how we are brought together into this big bug wide world of urban sketching <laughs> and there are still people joining us hello hi everyone for joining us who just tuned in if you've missed the first half there will be a replay after this thank you very much for joining us uh, the urban sketchers live on how to submit a really good proposal for the symposium all right, um, I'd just like to clarify before we go on to the next round of questions. Mayuresh, who asked us a little bit about paper size, clarified to say it's about teaching. And he would like to know whether it's 
okay to think of framing and composition in a small sketchbook and talking about single line sketching and all that. Well, uh, in a nutshell, Mayuresh, if I'll take this question really quickly, you can do a workshop on working real small format. Mm -hmm. Gavi Campanario, our, uh, the founder of Urban Sketches, for instance, did a symposium proposal on working with a really small pocket-sized sketchbook, for mm -hmm. instance. So it's like a specific medium, a specific way to go about it. So yes, it can be about that. Uh, so it's okay to go small, but if you're going to go large, then well, you'll you'll have to think about how to how to how do you make it relevant to urban sketching? It's mm -hmm. all about that. It's not just about the size of the paper, but how do you make that topic relevant to urban sketching? Because so I just had a question whether um, whether it's okay to submit submit a workshop proposal about designing a character which would be used in drawings. But if you're designing a character, how how is that relevant to urban sketching? If you design a character of yourself, that's not urban sketching per se, unless you're going to make everyone be in a mirror. Maybe you're going to to put an urban sketching skew on that. Perhaps you get participants to sit in a cafe with lots of mirrors and they have to draw themselves. Then that gives you context. You can draw a portrait. They are working on something live on location. And that would be urban sketching. That's how you take a topic and put an urban sketching slant on it. That would be an interesting workshop. Yeah, <laughs> that would be an interesting <laughs> workshop. Which brings us to another topic. Like, how do you, I mean, there are, if you look through various symposiums, there are so many symposiums that have been held now. And there are topics of all kinds. What we're looking for is an interesting take on something. It's not necessarily just like how to paint a marine scape for instance mm -hmm. but maybe like how do you they have that what is the angle that makes this particularly interesting it's not just it can't be generic anymore how do you capture buildings in an urban environment that's not interesting for instance uh, stephanie bauer did a workshop on thinking of drawing buildings like a series of cake now that's you know, it's got to be a captivating title as well. It's like, oh, people are interested. That's a new way of looking at things. Okay, let's see. We've got another question in here. Let's see. Let's pull up the one by Eliana Bianco. That's a very good question. Do the workshops need to be in English? Rita, I'll let you get answer that one. So the simple answer is yes, because... This is the International Symposium. We now have a lot of regional events, a lot of regional um, mini, I don't want to use the word symposium because we, we want to save it for the international one, but a lot of mini um, gatherings where um, the uh, information and workshops are presented in the local language. However, with the International Symposium, to make it accessible for everybody. English is the official language of, of urban sketches. So, yes. Okay. Thank you, Rita. And I hope that answers your question, Elan Elania. And we do recognize that, that, that Urban Sketchers is an international organization. There are people who speak all kinds of languages. The thing is at a symposium, the lingua franca, <laughs> the one that unites everyone that most people will know is English. So, um, Yes, English does. You have to have a certain level of proficiency because you do have to think also, how are you going to express yourself, explain your your workshop or your demo or your lecture? Mm -hmm. How are you going to break it down and and feel confident to to explain things clearly and answer the questions that you will get? So mm -hmm. you do need to have a certain level of proficiency. You don't have to be extremely fluent and uh, uh yak yak like me you, but uh no absolutely that's we've had amazing instructors in the past who spoke very basic english or even worked with an interpreter i served as an interpreter for norberto at one of the workshops in that he gave in barcelona so so don't don't think that the language is is such a huge barrier but um it the, the official language is, is is English, in short. I would say the test of it is if someone has asked you in English, how do you do that? And if you're able to explain, 
even if your grammar is not perfect, if you're mm -hmm. able to explain your process, you should be all right. And then after that, you have an idea, okay, I need to improve my English here or there, and that'll, that will make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're looking for Virginia. Virginia Hein, who's in the Mojave Desert <laughs> right now. Virginia, <laughs> if you are online and able to join us, please hit in, next to the comment box. There is a little icon that looks like a camera and a plus in it. So, Virginia, if you're online right now, give us a little wave and tap that little video icon. We'll give you a few minutes to uh, give me a couple minutes to see if you can come on. In the meantime, let's take a look and see we've got if we have any more questions. This is an interesting question from Mr. Valo Valodolid. If one is at the beginning of the journey, is there a book recommendation? Okay. Um, I think we need to clarify the uh, beginning of uh, the teaching journey, the urban sketching journey, uh, which which were you referring to? <laughs> so <laughs> clarify that many, we'll get back to you. Yeah, there are many books put out by many of the urban sketching instructors. There's a whole series of them. So there are certainly books on urban sketching and covering many aspects of it. And a lot of those people are teachers. So I think they'll help in the teaching part as well as in the, in the learning yeah, part. True. Jane, as we wait and see if Virginia is going to join us before we hit the, the rest of the questions, what would you think? I mean, in, in addition to starting, because you do need to start somewhere, what would you say is, uh, is the most important thing to think about as a first step from going to, oh, lots of people have asked me about this thing that I'm drawing. How would you, what was the first step? What would you say is the first step to thinking of actually starting to teach a workshop? Um, first step. I think the first step is, is coming up with what it is that makes you excited, excited enough to want to share. Um, I think that those, those aha moments, those kind of, Oh, wow, anything, those sorts of things that make you excited and make you, um, that, that you're passionate about, those are the things that are worth teaching and worth sharing. So it isn't just the, you know, <coughs> how do I do this? There's a little bit of a why do I do this mm -hmm. as well? Um, you know, what is it that gives me a thrill or what is it that makes this work? So I think those are some of the things to consider. Um, and sometimes it's a, you know, it might be a, it might be a tool that, that interests you. It might be a technique. It's, it's, it's sort of hard to say because everyone's experience in, in expressing themselves is so different. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, you've got to be passionate to want to share something. And, and generous. I mean, teaching is a very mm -hmm. generous process. You give away what you've learned um, and you have to be prepared to do that. Uh, there are sometimes people who are reluctant, you know, they keep their secrets. And if, if, that's, if that's you, then you don't want to be a teacher. It's a te teaching is about giving away everything. That is so true. Very, <laughs> very true. Yep. Very, very true. And that's a great way now for us to segue to... Virginia Hine, thank you, Virginia, for joining us. Virginia is coming to us from the Mojave Desert. I'm <laughs> clicking accept, and I hope she can get online. Okay, as we were waiting. Oh, Yay. well, there we go. Hey, hey Virginia, hi. how are you? <laughs> hi, I'm on my phone. That's what's working, so hi. <laughs> glad Very to be glad joining to, you. Very glad to have you. Everybody, let's have some hearts for all the instructors who have appeared on the screen <laughs> who are coming on the show for you right now. That's, that's right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's, that's really cool. Virginia, thank you for joining us. Sure. Uh, I know you're on vacation right now. Uh, what's the weather like in the desert? It's beautiful. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah. It's sunny, nice and cool. It's uh, high desert, so it's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that sounds incredible. And to kick things off, I'm going to ask you the same question that I've asked everyone else who's been on the show so far. How many symposiums have you taught at? I'm very fortunate that I've taught at five. My first one was Barcelona. And so it's been about every other year, as it turned out. So, yeah. That's, that's incredible. And we're very glad to have you here. People, we have a fair bit of experience here on this little screen on your phone. 
And we've got a few more questions for you. So Virginia, first thing yes. we'd like to ask you, how do you make a proposal stand out from the crowd? Great question. Um, just from the point of view of reading proposals, I notice if I see right away that someone is putting themselves in the mind of the participant, you know, that just jumps off the page. In other words, they're, they've thought through not just, the instructor is not just thinking, what do I want to teach? They're thinking, what do I want people to learn and experience? You know, and yes, it's what do I have to offer that may be a little different than somebody else. And that's always a good thing to identify, but it's really, you know, what is it that I want my participants to experience? And that really, going along with what Rita said about the learning goals, the person breaks, that successful proposal is broken down the steps in a certain way of what a process could be, uh, a method. And so uh, early feedback is usually, I'm looking for, did they, Think about getting feedback early on because right away, you know, as an instructor, you want to know, are we all on the same page? Do people understand what I'm trying to get across? And yes, you, you probably already asked them, are you a beginner? Are you more experienced? But you're going to see right away and they're going to see what each other and it starts to build community. And I think there's things you can see in a really great proposal where they're thinking through the, how the group's going to be interacting in that early feedback. Uh, you're thinking that, how can I really, really just get the process down as simply and quickly as I can? And again, you're being very focused. A, pr a really great proposal has a very clear focus. Mm -hmm. And it's just everything kind of uh, leads to that focus in in the workshop. Also, there's a certain, it's not just like do what I do. It's, there's a, a lot of room for each participant to make it their own, to be very uh, expressive with what you're giving them. Um, so again, you know, we're looking for people who can either break down demos into maybe short blocks, or uh, they can, you know, somehow think about Maybe I come into it with a certain amount already done. So they're showing us uh, a short demo, not a 45 minutes to an hour, as someone was saying earlier. Um, you know, urban sketchers just want to get it in do. So we're really looking that you're thinking about that ability for the participants to get in and do something right away. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's just thinking clearly about the process is just jumps off the page and makes it an outstanding proposal. I think the other part, adding, part of that, though, oh, that, oh, that oh, idea of, of keeping um, the, 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 the participant is actually making it their own. Sometimes proposals are so rigid, you know, that they might say the only way to do this is this. And those are ones we steer away from exactly. because if you're, not, if, if you're too rigid, then you're going to be too dogmatic and too... Mm -hmm. It's that's not what we're looking for in urban sketches. We don't want to produce clones. We want everyone to be to, to be their own better self in their sketches, not a variation of someone else or a copy of someone else. That well, that's a I'll really good you. point, Jane. Yeah, that's a really <laughs> yeah. good point. Which and, and to add to that, um, and, and Rita's touched on this just now, but the other thing that you have to think about then is building on what Jane said is uh, what Jane and Virginia said is you have to think about how your workshop is scaffolded. One thing leads to the other, leads mm -hmm. to the other. They're, it's it's a it's a series of building on relevant mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. So you do need to think about that. And you shouldn't be like trying to build a huge escape ladder that it's, you know, like many, 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 many steps. Keep it simple, uh, but doable, so that every person goes away with a particular tool um, and when I say tool, I'm not speaking just off a brush or something like that, but a particular skill that they can apply with their style. Okay, so yeah. thank you for that. Now, um, there is an interesting question that naturally segues into one, one of the topics that we are also going to touch on. Uh, Ronaldo would like to know, what are the chances of a first-time symposium instructor 
having a proposal chosen. So Rita, I'd like you to take that before I jump into the follow up with Virginia. So if I understood the question correctly, um, do you have any chance of becoming a symposium instructor if you have never taught a at a symposium before? And the answer is absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have, we actually reserve a number of spots. We do want to have new instructors, new faces in our community teaching at symposiums. So please, if you have never taught before, don't be discouraged, uh, jump in. Which is not to say that it's the same as a completely brand new instructor jumping in, having never taught before in a different setting. Because symposium is sort of a, a, a big league, <laughs> a big uh, playing field. So we do want to bring in experienced folks to, to teach um, and to give that great uh, learning nugget to to people who are traveling um, from faraway places to something like that. So mm -hmm. if you had never taught before, period, um, as Rob had said, and we've kind of continuously reiterated, make sure you get some experience. Um, you give some free workshops at your community, at your local chapter, um, through schools, through libraries. Um, get a lot of experience first, and then absolutely try try it get some feedback get better and apply <laughs> send us a proposal sounds good good and one thing that we haven't mentioned so far if you are not sure what goes into a good proposal there is a pdf in that form on the urban sketchers uh, request for proposal page look at it thoroughly because it's extremely well explained there are ex examples of what we were talking about sketches that we look for uh, how do you break things down? There are excellent examples in there. So have a look. And if you're interested in teaching, maybe you're thinking, okay, symposium is in the future. I'm going to start learning how to do a workshop proposal now. That document is also really, really useful because you could well use that as a guide into putting together a proposal for an event that is coming up near you, mm -hmm. a regional mm -hmm. event or uh, something in your city, something like that. Okay. Virginia, now let's get into the selection process. I'm sure a lot of people are curious, how do proposals get selected? We, I write something, okay, maybe I'm a, I've, I've taught something, I put together a proposal, I upload it to the Urban Sketchers website, what happens next? Well, <laughs> they get put on a massive spreadsheet <laughs> by our wonderful assistant that uh, works with us. And uh, basically, as a committee, depending on how many we have, uh, you're, you're going to have at least four people. And you know, depending on, again, how many proposals there are, but at least four of the members of the committee are going to read your proposal. And we basically are scoring. And we have kind of a very simple little score system. And uh, then there's a certain amount at the end that are scored very high and oftentimes we go back and more people if we have things that are sort of where we need a tiebreaker or somebody needs to uh, get another, another opinion we'll have more people on the committee read it um, but our committee is not the final deciders we basically uh, just say these are the ones that we think are really strong and we give that to the symposium committee and that's where the final decision gets made um, but this is why we like everybody to understand that we get a lot of really great proposals. And depending on the location, sometimes a lot of people have the same great idea. Uh, for instance, with Auckland, we had a lot of proposals about trees. There's a lot of amazing trees in Auckland. And <laughs> so, you know, I mean, there's, it's just kind of a, a funny thing that you'll just see a lot of the same kind of proposal and so we're looking at, you know, what are those standouts? And again, we've talked about those kinds of things that are standouts. And as Rita said, you know, we're excited when we see a really great proposal from a new instructor, another or a new to the symposium. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, And so those, we we look for that. We look for people who are new. We also look, we want a nice geographical mix. You know, we want people from really all over to be part of of the international symposium. So that's one of the things we're looking at. Yeah, and another thing that's that's important also is is how dedicated and how involved someone has been mm-hmm. with urban sketchers in general as well. And and those are the factors that are sort of outside of the educational merit of a proposal. They get considered later down the down the road when we're trying to really just pick the the, the selected few. Um, you know, or for example, we might get up to 300 or even more proposals for a symposium, and we have to choose only 20 from that. So we have to look at, you know, not just the educational merits, but also are we representing the world? Are we looking at the sketchers who have been active in their community, have contributed? Um, are, we, are we giving new instructors a chance to participate? So there are other factors that that factor in. So if your proposal wasn't selected this time around, it doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't have Mm -hmm. um, the educational inspirational value. It just might be that we had to unfortunately pick one out of of 100. Um, So that happens sometimes and so often we have a case where a, 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 simple, a proposal may have actually scored top marks mm-hmm. but it can't yeah. be selected because it's mm-hmm. you know there are just too many that are similar so it's yes. it's not always easy and you think oh but that one sounded so good but there are so many that are so good mm-hmm. yeah so just just to add to that don't feel discouraged and if your proposal is not accepted which uh, brings us to this great question. If I submit a proposal and it is rejected, rejected, can I reapply and will I get feedback? Great question, Annette. This is coming from our incoming education director <laughs> and it is, it's a really relevant question. So uh, Rita, I'm gonna let you take that one. <laughs> Um, so for, to reapply in the next symposium, absolutely, you can um, you can do that. Um, and and if there is, if you request feedback, we absolutely try to make time. Sometimes it takes a while because we're all once again volunteers, and if several hundred people request feedback, um, it takes some while for us to get back. But usually we do. So yes. And yes, <laughs> yes, and and if you if you do want feedback, uh, please ask. But please be patient because, uh, like Virginia was saying, you know sometimes there are hundreds of proposals, and uh, this Rita just brought up a really good point. Urban Sketches is a organization made up of volunteers. So during the symposial proposal um, scoring time, when we're going through proposals, it's an incredibly intense few weeks. And we only have like a really short window of time when the educa- education committee is like giving up weekends and weeknights and all that. And we're just reading proposal after proposal, trying to look for the cream of the global crop for the upcoming symposium and then after that like we've done our scoring etc we've done our uh we've shortlisted things it goes to the symposium committee who will make who will balance all the other things the budget the geographical mix new and old instructors what would work for a particular venue sometimes there are like amazing proposals but maybe there's a venue that doesn't work or too many instructors want that venue and they have to give that location to the to the most appropriate so when and if you are rejected and i've been rejected too don't feel bad try again (laughs) try again okay let's see we've got another question coming up um okay this is an interesting one from USK Guati. I hope I'm saying that right. That right. Are there proposals on how to open a new chapter in a city or a country workshop? 
Um, that is probably going to be a lecture. There are often lectures at symposiums where there will be advice on how to build chapters, how to sustain chapters, and that sort of thing. So a workshop proposal is always about um, urban sketching methods. So it involves a tool, it involves a way of looking at things, and how you render a specific scene. Mm. Okay. okay. So there are still people joining us. Awesome. Hi. Hi, everybody who's still, who's just joined in. Thank you for all of you who are still online. If you have questions, we've come to the end of our main list of questions. So if you have questions now, please stick it into that little speech bubble icon with a question. Put that in there and we will address your question live. But in the meantime, as we wait for questions to pop in, James, what would you, do you have anything to add after we've been talking about all these topics so far? Um, one of the things that will sometimes happen is that we read a proposal and uh, the immediate reaction is, oh, I'd love to do that. Um, mm -hmm. You want something that, that, that just sounds really desirable or fun or interesting or unique. And we do get them. I mean, we're experienced artists, drawers, whatever else, and uh, we've tried all sorts of things, but there'll be, there'll be just something you think, oh, that just sounds really cool or really fun or it's a different approach. Um, so sometimes coming up with something, it doesn't have to be quirky, but a different take on things or a, a different way of seeing the world or, or whatever can be helpful. Um, it could be that it's site-specific, site as I mentioned before, where it's something that could really only work in that particular mm -hmm. location. Mm -hmm. um, it, it might be, um, yeah, I, th I think really just something that, that grabs you. Think And think also perhaps... Would you like to do it? You know, it's you've got to want to teach it because if you if you are accepted, you teach the same um, the same uh, um, demonstration workshop three times. So you've got to go through the whole thing three times with three different groups. So you have to be passionate about it. But that passion comes through. I think that's that's you know, what are you passionate about? What do you love to share? Okay. Very true. So thank thank you, Jane. That that's a really good tip, actually. Um, now we're going to take one more question here. El Eliana is asking, can we apply more than one proposal? I'm I'm assuming you're asking, can you submit more than one proposal? In mm -hmm. a nutshell, absolutely yes, you can. You can submit multiple, and we will go through them all and pick the best one from that single. Um, instructor so if you're submitting five we'll pick the best one from that and we'll, we'll actually read them all too so yes absolutely you can you can submit more than one um going around the room i'd like to ask you this think about the first time that you taught at a symposium i'm going to start with you rita going around my my screen we're going clockwise so i'm going to go start with rita first think of the first time that you taught at a symposium what are uh, one of the biggest things that you felt was a personal lesson for you teaching at a symposium? What was what, what were one of the your aha moments? I think I'm going to open that to either teaching at a symposium or learning, taking a workshop at a, at a symposium. Um, yeah, I think it's just it's so exciting. It's it's such a huge honor to be part of the the team of of the most stellar instructors from around the world so you really want to give it all you want to give it your best <laughs> and um one thing to keep in mind i think that just came up that i kind of forgot about is is the fact that you have to do it three times <laughs> So there's each there's there's never going to be the same exact workshop. It's each experience will be very different, even though you're teaching the same subject in the same place. Uh, but the energy of the group, the energy, your own personal energy and the place the, it changes each each time. So for me, it was interesting to discover that, um, you know, there was uh, some more successful and some less successful attempts out of those three. Very good points. Thank you, Rita. Okay, same question, Virginia now. Oh, 
what well, that is that such a good first, such a good first question. Time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. My first symposium and uh, experience teaching at a symposium was Barcelona and I really overplanned. You know, I had and I had done a run through, a local run through, but I honestly just hadn't considered the pace that it would be in a, you know, a play, walking to the workshop, you know, getting everybody kind of comfortable. And there's just a lot of little things, not having taught a lot of workshops that at that point that just I overplanned. And so I learned, boy, you've really got to be flexible and it's okay if you've got extra things, but you've really got to have the gist of it and know that you're going to cover what's important. And then maybe, as it turned out, you could say, gee, if you have more time, you could do this. But <laughs> you, it's like you do, you just, it's just, it took me time to learn to pace things in a way that were comfortably achievable for just mm -hmm. about everybody. That's, that was my major learning curve. And also, it's crazy things can happen. You're on location, you're teaching in the street. In my case, somebody could fall off a pier and <laughs> be screaming for help and have the police come and you know i mean there's just that's the most extreme but you're on location and that's what's exciting and fun so you just in every way have to be flexible because it could start to rain it could there's just so many things and so you you kind of have a message that you're there to have to to present but you know the most important thing is just that you're, you've got this little community of people and you want it to be a good experience. <laughs> and so that's what's uppermost in your mind. And if that makes sense, I just mm -hmm. learned that it was really about being flexible and, and making the best experience in the moment that I could, even though I planned and planned, sometimes things have to change. So adaptability. That's a really, really good lesson. Yeah. That, that is so mm -hmm. true. I think I've taught at six symposium and it's true. Every year out of those three workshops that you teach, the factors and the circumstances change for every single one. So that's, that's a great lesson. Thank you, Virginia. Jane, tell us about your first symposium and what that was. Well, like. I, think, I think one of the things is this is an international symposium. Um, and so you have people from all over the world. And I don't, it wasn't at my first one, but there was one symposium where there wasn't a single person in my group who, for whom English was a first language. And so I had to completely change the pace, mm. simplify my language. I still wanted to cover the same material, but I had to explain it all much more carefully and with fewer words and simpler language. Mm. And so, so that's something that is very different. Um, and the, the group dynamics can be hugely different. So, yeah, flexibility, flexibility in your approach is, is really essential. Um, the other thing is the outcomes um, will, will vary, yeah, based on, on all those other things. I had, I had one, one um, where it rained and I was working under a tree, and so what we did is we gathered some leaves and some figs from under the tree, went under cover, and then worked on those because, it, it, you know, sometimes you just have to completely change mm -hmm. what you're mm -hmm. trying to do, but stick within, you know, we're, we're learning a little bit more about that tree while we're drawing those things and then move back in and carry on. Um, but it, the, that was the, the big thing was me, this, that very international um, approach. Now, I speak English. I have a little bit of French, but not much else. And so, you know, there, there are times when you really have to simplify your language to almost drawing stick figures to just get the message through to someone. And that's challenging, but fascinating and wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jane. And I, I think we've all talked about, we've been hitting that the same point in various ways, how important it is to be, to be able to adapt to a situation mm -hmm. because there's so many possible unfortunate foreseen circumstances since we're working on location. Um, I th think that uh, something to add to this is also your attitude. And again, this helps to reiterate how important it is to have teaching experience because if you, you've only taught twice, for instance, a total of twice, you're excited, you're going to teach something, it that that may not be enough experience, teaching experience for you to teach at a symposium because it 
it it takes uh, you have to have a certain level of calm which only comes from teaching a lot so that you understand how to adapt with a situation. Like Jane was saying, she's teaching people how to draw trees and it starts to pour with rain. So what do you do next? You cannot be a panicked person. You have to be able to go, okay, this <laughs> is not working. I'm gonna, we can move with that. How can you smoothly guide the group? Because you don't want to cause panic among your participants. So how do you deal with that? And speaking about attitude, uh, let me tell you about one of the key things during my first symposium in Singapore, where I also taught. I didn't teach a workshop, but I taught an activity, which is something we had in those days. And I took, I had the opportunity to take three workshops from three amazing instructors whom I really, really looked up to. And all of them, I'm going to name them because they're, they're, it's significant. One was Lepan, who taught about, who taught 180 180 degrees drawing. Jim Richards, who is also amazing, who taught, who taught how to capture crowds in a, in a busy space. And Virginia Hine, who's right here, who taught us how to use a black, strong, strong, bold contrast with a pop of color. Now, what really impressed me was at, at this international event, the attitude of the teachers, of the instructors, they were all incredibly nurturing. They all wanted the best for them from their students. And they were able to speak to each single participant as if they were the only one in the room. And that is a special something. That is a skill that more than the, your talent as a sketcher, that is a skill as an educator, which is also so key when you're going to teach at a symposium level. How do you open your heart and your empathy to the people who are coming to you? And you, 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 it's a privilege for you to be able to welcome people from all over the world, make them feel comfortable, make them feel that you are here to help them on their personal artistic journey. How are you going to get that across? I learned it from every single instructor whom I learned workshops from at symposium that I've attended throughout the years. Virginia is the first one who who made me feel like this is a, this is amazing what symposium instructors, urban sketches instructors are sharing. And I thought after her workshop, if I am ever privileged to have the chance to teach, this is one of the key things that I will model. So thank you, Virginia. I get a chance to oh. thank you for this in person, <laughs> live on Instagram. Thank you, Rob. And, uh, because, because really, what I think what we've seen also, we've all seen time and again, the skill to, to draw and to paint is one thing. Skill as an artist, the skill to teach is a completely different skill set. Mm -hmm. That is what we're looking for here in a symposium proposal, in the person who is selected to teach at a symposium. So please bear that in mind. Get a lot of practice under your belt and really learning to do all of these things is possible. It is possible. And like everyone has said, we are always looking for new blood, new ways of looking at things, new new ideas. That's, that's always very, very welcome. And as we Something come to the end of the hour, uh, I'd like to open it up. Um, final questions. If you'd like to put anything into the into the question, the asking question speech bubble box, and I'd like to go around the room for like a final roundup for from everyone who's here. So, Rita, you're up first. I just wanted to thank again the education committee, um, whose members are here to answer your questions because they bring in so much experience and they I've taught I've learned so much from you uh, guys Virginia and Rob and Jane in particular this last four years working with you so it's it, we're very lucky to have to have you answer questions and help um, help sketchers on this journey of becoming instructors and 
uh, just a logistical reminder that once again, the open proposal period is until December 11th. So make sure you get your proposal in. Um, and once again, we're not just looking for workshops, but also demos, activities, and lectures. Uh, all of the information is on our website at urbansketchers.org. December 10th or December 11th? Yeah, I think it's 10th of December, right? The, uh, the deadline. The deadline. Let me check again. Maybe uh, I'll, I'll check while you guys are uh, talking. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Okay, closing remarks. Virginia. Um, I hope that this this has been great. I'm really glad we could chat. I think for those of you that uh, are new to this idea of teaching at a symposium, you know, even though you've taught, teaching a workshop is a little different. Coming from maybe more of an academic teaching experience into workshop, it's just, it, it is a little bit of a different uh, shift. Um, it's a fantastic experience. I lo I've loved every symposium. I lo I've loved being part of a team. And it's just been a fantastic team. And we're all very, very different. So, I mean, I just, if you've got an idea and it's something you want to try, go for it. It's a lot of fun. Thank yeah. you, Virginia. Jane, closing remarks then. Um, Last thoughts. I would advise anyone who's thinking of writing a proposal who is relatively new to teaching to actually practice talking while you paint and talking while you draw because that is a skill that you need to be able to teach. And True. it's not something that happens automatically because naturally um, half of our brain is geared to sketching and half of our brain is geared for language. And if any of you have been to a workshop and at the end of the workshop you sort of can't find your words, it's because you've been working on the other side of the brain. So practising teaching while you sketch, uh, sorry, talking while you sketch, mm -hmm. It's actually really important, and that's something that uh, you don't want to discover the first time you teach a workshop that you actually can't do it. <laughs> Excellent points. Excellent points, everyone. And I guess we, let's say I'm just checking the question box. There are no more questions. Uh, that means that everyone, I hope, is very satisfied. Thank you all for joining the stream. Thank you for this to, to this incredible panel, this incredible body of experience here. Um, you're all much loved. <laughs> and for all you guys, all you urban sketchers out there, thank you for joining the live stream. We hope that you understand how to put together a symposium proposal a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Someone mentioned in the comments, I saw that these are stepping stones. Thank you. Uh, we're very glad you feel that. What we're trying to do is demystify the process a little bit, explain a little bit more. And I mean, it's an ongoing thing. So um, if there are any questions you see any of the education committee, come talk to us, ask us. Um, and, you know, we're, we're always happy to help. That's the thing about the Urban Sketchers movement. We're always happy to help. We all just want the best for everyone. So with that, thank you again all for joining the Urban Sketchers Live about how to submit a proposal. The, 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 it'll be on so that you can rewatch it again. And um, <laughs> we'll see you all next time, hopefully, at a symposium somewhere around the world in one of these years. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Rob. Thank, thank you, Virginia. Thank, thank you, you, Jane. Bye. Bye. <laughs>